Hey everyone, welcome back to Nintendo Prime. I am Nathaniel Rumpeljantz, and hey, if you guys liked the news the last couple days, it's been pretty cool. We had that awesome Nintendo Direct Mini Showcase, Partner Showcase yesterday, ended up being a hell of a lot better uh, than I think any of us anticipated. We had this Sparks of Hope event today as well, about 15-ish, 16 -ish minutes of goodness there. I, I really enjoyed that. But what we need to talk about today is an article uh, by a writer at Games. I almost said GameStop. GameSpot. Uh, this writer has really put a damper for some on the idea of being excited about Nintendo Directs. And this is because they happen to own another platform, which I find to be rather, rather fascinating. But uh, we need to, to talk about this in earnest. And before we do, hey, if you enjoy this video, you enjoy the conversations and what we're talking about here, I would appreciate if you were subscribed to the channel. We are on our road to 80,000 subscribers. We have a massive giveaway planned at 80k but uh you know that shouldn't be why you subscribe you should actually subscribe just because you actually enjoy what i have to say and you like our community that being said let's actually look at this article and i think you'll instantly understand stand what we're talking about but i i want to read the article to you uh and then talk about it in earnest because i i think context really matters when we're having conversations like this and i don't want anybody actually going out and saying anything to this writer. It is his opinion. He's allowed to have it, even if we disagree. So let's go ahead and take a look. All right, so here's the article in question. It says, Steam Deck has ruined Nintendo Directs for me. I used to marvel at all the indie games I could finally play. Now I've already got access to them elsewhere. And again, this is written by Steve Watts. Please, please, I cannot repeat this enough. Do not go and attack the writer or anything like that. Um, agree or disagree. All right, so... Hope it comes to Switch. We've all seen or said or thought this countless times while finding interesting and experimental PC games that would feel great on a handheld. And developers have obliged us, transforming the Switch into a flourishing home for smaller, less hardware-intensive games. The one drawback has typically been the weight, as these games often would hit in PC first and come to Switch months or even years later. That's still the case today which is why owning a Steam Deck has made recent Nintendo Direct presentations feel a lot less exciting for me than they used to be. Since the earliest days of Nintendo Direct, I've loved the presentation style. Video game announcements and trailers wrapped up in a quick, snappy, visually appealing package. It's no wonder that they've become the standard for the industry as more publishers move away from live events. But the star of the show has always been the games themselves. And when most of those games are also appearing on a handheld PC that looks and feels a lot like a Switch. And they are often coming to PC earlier and or cheaper. It's hard to get too excited. Take today's Nintendo Direct Mini you saw about yesterday. Uh, for example, some of the games shown, like Nier Automata or Portal Companion Collection, are already available on Steam, making the Switch version the latecomer. Right now, the Portal bundle on Steam is $3.00 while the newly launched Portal Companion Collection on Switch is $20. This is partly due to a Steam summer sale, but that's another point in the Steam's favor. These deep discounts are much more common on Valve's store. Meanwhile, surprise drops like Little Noah, Skion or Sion of Paradise, surprise dropped on Steam right alongside the Switch. Even the big finish, the announcement that Persona 5 Royale is finally coming to the Switch, was suddenly undercut by the announcement weeks ago that is coming to PC and Xbox Game Pass. It used to be that when I saw a great looking indie game like Rogue Legacy 2 or Vampire Survivors, I would watch a Nintendo Direct with rapt anticipation, hoping to see that they were coming to my handheld of choice. Now I have them both and I've been enjoying them for weeks on my Steam Deck. I don't need to hope it comes to Switch anymore because I already have a device that, with its access to the vast PC games library that often gets games first, renders that hope irrelevant. This isn't to say that the Nintendo Direct wasn't entertaining and full of great games. Nintendo is a big publisher, and lots of developers like to show off their wares on a Nintendo Direct first. There were plenty of games I wasn't even aware of that were shown at today's Direct. I'm just coming to terms with the fact that the Steam Deck has rendered the Switch an exclusive-only console for everything else. I'll likely play on Steam Deck sooner and or cheaper. That's because even for the games released simultaneously across PC and Switch, I have more confidence in my Steam library remaining with me. I would like to think that Nintendo has learned its lesson and is planning the Switch library to be forward compatible to the next one, but there's no guarantee. 
Not to mention, Steam often gets more aggressive sale prices than those on Switch. So by simply waiting a little while, I could probably get the same games on a similar device or cheaper. More so, the Steam Deck often offers better performance, along with all of the Steam's community hooks, tools like mods, and features like achievements. Game updates and patches often come to the Steam before they also come to Switch, and if I do ever graduate to a desktop gaming PC, I know my full library will follow me there. This all makes it even more vital for Nintendo to show off its first-party exclusives or secure more cool-looking indie exclusives like it did back in 2017, when it first launched Golf Story or Battle Chef Brigade deserves sequels. I love Nintendo's games. I always have. There's nothing quite like the pinpoint platforming of Mario, the epic fantasy grandeur of Zelda, or the eerie isolation of Metroid. Like all Nintendo platforms, the Switch will remain the sole repository for Nintendo's unique game design sensibilities. Nintendo's own games themselves will be enough to keep the Switch in my gaming rotation for the foreseeable future. And there are still third-party developers making exclusive Switch games like Dragon Quest Treasures or Mario Plus Rabbit Sparks of Hope. Besides, but Nintendo hasn't had a big summer showcase like many of the other publishers, and this presentation was squarely focused on third parties. The days of hope it comes to Switch may be over. After years of not being a PC gamer, Steam Deck has opened a new world of early access to games that I so often had to wait for a console port previously. That means I can get it faster, cheaper, and more future-proofed on Steam. The Steam Deck won't ultimately be a Switch killer, but it has taken some of the luster out of what used to make Nintendo Directs feel so special for me. Now, again, I want to point out that I, I really don't want anyone going to attack this person. Uh, and their, this is their personal opinion. So their opinion can't be wrong because this is all about their personal taste and their personal excitement. Uh, I find it rather interesting, of course, um, that this article exists in a time when playing PC games in your hand isn't actually a new concept. We've had the GPD win. Uh, we've had the Aya Neo and many, many handheld PC gaming devices over the years. Uh, the reason the Steam Deck is really getting all this pub isn't even the price point because, look, I, I, I the Steam Deck's really exciting. It sounds great at $400, but you got to buy a bunch of accessories for it to, to take advantage of everything. And you got to buy, a, you know, some pretty beefy uh, micro SD cards, you know, if you actually want to get, by the way, you have to do the same thing on Switch if you're buying digitally. But the point is that by the time you're all done, that $400 uh, system's now become a six to $700 system uh, before you even bought a game. Uh, now, I, I understand you could buy a game off the game, just play it. But you know what I mean? Like to really take advantage of it, you're, you're going to need more. Uh, so the $400 system seems like a budget, but it's really not. Uh, and then even when you get the bigger one, I think it only goes up to 500 gigabytes. Am I wrong on that? Someone correct me in the chat uh, if I'm wrong on, on the top end Steam Deck's 500 gigabytes. It's still, for PC games, not much. I PC game, by the way, and I'm telling you right now, I know he's just getting into PC gaming, so he's probably dabbling more in the indie scene, but on my, on my PC, I've literally got three terabytes of storage filled with games just from the last year. So, yeah, Steam's going to need a lot more than what it comes with, the Steam Deck, uh, and it's going to cost more and more and more for that storage and everything else. So, look, this isn't me trying to attack the Steam Deck either. I think it's a, a, a great piece of tech, and obviously it has positioned itself to be more affordable, even considering all of that, than its contemporaries. It's just not a new concept. And I'm pointing this out mostly because this person's opinion basically is, I've never really played games on PC. He fully admits I don't have a gaming PC, although... I'm not sure if he's aware of the computer he's literally writing this from, which is probably some sort of laptop, could probably already play some of these indie games that he's playing. I, I'm not sure how aware he is. I I try to be conscientious of the fact that a lot of people that have grown up on console gaming don't really fully understand the PC gaming scene and that you don't need some powerful PC, you know, powerful desktop PC to be a PC gamer. Like that's one of the beauties of PC is actually you, there's a wide range of, of uh, hardware out there that can adequately play games at some form of an enjoyable level. So uh, one, you know, welcome, by the way, to the, the PC gaming world. I've been in it since the 90s. I'm, I'm really glad to see another person partake in it. But also, I don't know that using this as an argument that the Nintendo Direct means less is fair. Now, you could argue the some of the big announcements, like ending with Persona, not as big of a deal if you game on PC, or to be honest, any other platform. Uh, but okay, fine. You have a Steam Deck, cool. 
What I what I think is interesting is noting that some of the luster seems to be taken away of directs for this person simply because they the games are also going to be on PC. As as an example, Harvest Stella. They didn't even mention that. We didn't even know this game existed until this Nintendo Direct. It was exclusively announced in this Nintendo Direct. It's going to PC and Switch. That's it. He's probably going to end up playing it, if he does, on his Steam Deck. I understand that, but Steam doesn't have announcements. So you get the PC Gaming Show every year, and the PC Gaming Show is great, but how and where are you going to find out about all of these games? Like That's kind of my thing is, even if the Nintendo Direct luster is taken away for your excitement for Switch, these games being announced should also heighten your excitement for your Steam Deck. It, it almost is like, if you're that excited over Steam Deck and you're finally realizing how amazing PC gaming truly is, because it is, and absolutely, the points he makes about future compatibility and bringing your games forward to other devices, oh, PC dominates in a way PlayStation, Xbox, and Switch can only dream of. But here's the problem. Here's the problem. You're still finding out about these games at a direct. So even if it doesn't excite you for Switch, should it take away the luster for the Direct itself? If you just stop viewing the Direct as it's only announcing things for Switch, like this is the way that I looked at it with the Game Awards or uh, you know the Summer Game Fest or even you know Xbox. Xbox had a number of games, indie games, announced in their thing that were also coming to Nintendo Switch. We need to stop viewing these events, and, and maybe this is a mentality we all have, but we need to stop taking these individual events, whether it's from Sony, uh, like Street Fighter Six is announced, guess what? It's going to other platforms as well. Go figure. Like, we need to start stop looking at these, these individual console first-party hosted shows and stop looking at it as we only should watch this to be excited about that system. And if something is exciting is announced in that thing that I'm really interested in, but I'm going to play it on a different platform. Ergo, this thing is worse. It, I don't understand that mentality. Uh, and, and that's something I just from a personal opinion stance struggle to wrap my mind around this mindset that the Nintendo Direct mini partner showcase is worse because all the games that excited you in that showcase, some that you didn't even know about, some you admitted you didn't even know about until this Direct, are going to be available on a different platform. Why would that make you less excited for the Direct, knowing that you just got a bunch of games announced that you like? Like, Remember what Nintendo Directs are. Let's remember what Summer Game Fest is. Let's remember what the Xbox and Bethesda Showcase is. Let's remember what those state of plays are. What are they? Glorified advertising. They're advertising games. And at these advertisements of games, we get ads for new announcements for new games. And that's what people usually get really excited about is the prospect of new games getting unveiled at these events. It shouldn't matter what platform you're going to play the game on. If you found out about Harvest Stella at that Nintendo Direct Mini Showcase and you're excited for it and you want to play it, it shouldn't matter that you're going to play it on PC instead of playing it on Switch. That announcement should be exciting. Ergo, you're excitement for that direct i don't feel like should be lessened when something was announced you're looking forward to he admitted in his article other games that were announced that he's looking forward to but it's dampened my excitement for the direct because they're going to be on a different device i here, here's what i think he's trying to get at and he's trying to get at this uh without going this far with it because I, maybe he doesn't realize it yet or maybe he just doesn't want to upset nintendo stuff i actually I went back and looked at some of the articles he writes. He writes articles for all the platforms, so it's not like he's like a Nintendo writer at GameSpot. Uh, but, you know, he he does secure interviews. Uh, he has an interview up right now for Sparks of Hope that we're probably going to cover uh, during our podcast tonight. But what I find interesting uh, in going through his stuff is I, I think he's very aware that if he goes to, say, the luster of Switch itself is lessened because of his enjoyment of Steam Deck, He's worried he's going to anger, I don't know, fanboys, I guess. I, I, I think that's, that's probably the concern. He doesn't want the fanboys coming at him. So instead of saying the luster of Switch itself is lessened, the luster of the Nintendo Directs is lessened, he think will we'll probably get him a little bit less um, of that negative feedback. And I, I understand saying that. I, I just don't understand what the, that the Directs, when they're announcing games that you're excited for, how can it be lessened just because you're going to play them on a different platform? Uh, my excitement for Summer Game Fest wasn't lessened 
Uh, my excitement for uh, the, the, the the Volver Digital event wasn't lessened. Uh, my excitement for these events aren't lessened because I might play some of those games on other platforms. Like when TMNT Shredder's Revenge was shown off at uh, Summer Game Fest and they clearly were showing a different platform's version. It didn't lessen my excitement for it coming to Switch. It heightened my excitement knowing about all this new content, new features that were coming to Switch. And I think that's where I differentiate sometimes with these others is my excitement levels don't go down because I'm going to play a game on something else. The announcement is what's exciting. It doesn't matter where the announcement happens at. Um, now, I understand, you know, he, he did make one one really strong point in there, and that is that obviously some of the bigger announcements, uh, he repeated this a couple times. So one of the things that, that he was watching directs for, because he clearly likes to play indie games, which is totally fine. Uh, is that, you know, you always hope that he's, this game would come to Switch or that game would come to Switch or this game would come to Switch because he wants to play it portably. And for him, you know, the Portal announcements or the Near Automata or the Persona announcements, like those were three really big announcements in this Direct, obviously didn't slap for him. They didn't hit. They didn't, they didn't excite him because he can already play them on that Steam Deck. But again, personal opinions. He also said there was other games in that Direct that he didn't get excited for. So it's... It, it, it's kind of weird. It's kind of weird. Uh, I'll just say this. I'll just say this. I, I want to end with this. No shade at the Steam Deck. I, I think it's a wonderful platform. I PC game. I would like to have one to play some of my PC games on the go. Uh, and I do think, you know, in terms of its hardware capabilities and obviously the uh, Steam uh, platform that it's built upon, uh, there are a lot of things it does better than the Nintendo Switch. Uh, there are still some things the Switch has some advantages on. Uh, the Switch Lite, as an example, is much more portable than a Steam Deck is. Uh, you know, there is an OLED screen, which makes colors pop just that much more, which is, you know, a, a better screen technology than being used on the Steam Deck. There's obviously the motion controls and getting to play things like Nintendo Switch Sports. You just aren't going to kind of get that experience on Steam Deck. But on the flip side, Steam Deck can play all your PC games, pretty much, pretty much all of them. Uh, and yeah, some people do emulate Switch games on it uh, to varying, varying levels of success. Some games run better on Steam Deck than others when it comes to that emulation aspect. And emulating games in general is an advantage of PC gaming. Whether or not you guys agree with game emulation or not, that's your personal choice, but it is an advantage. So I look at it like this. We're all gamers. I'm really glad this person has finally discovered PC gaming and all of its amazing values, the sales. I mean, I know Switch is having one of its best sales it's ever had right now, but... It, it it's a true wonder to me that uh, a lot of us base our excitement for things seemingly around what I think is console loyalty. And I think up to this point, this person was really, really loyal to Switch as a portable gaming machine, not realizing there's been other portable gaming machines this entire time, long before Steam Deck. Uh, Steam Deck's not even readily a readily available platform. So his opinion's not going to be applicable to a majority of the readers it's going to be applicable only to a small subset of steam deck owners that happen to own switch uh and and i don't know how big that crossover is i don't know how many steam decks are out there i just know i can't go online right now and buy one without going to the second hand market i have to pre-order to get in a list to pay for it later this year and then get it uh and and that's fine i guess you can argue that's better than how playstation 5 is being handled i suppose I don't know that it's better. I think it's just different. That's just my personal opinion. But uh, there's being scalped. Like, like if I just glance at eBay right now, uh, I'm pretty sure that that the Steam Decks are being. So let me just type Steam Deck in and on eBay because you know people. Are, oh well, it's not being as scalped. I'm like I'm seeing eight hundred and thirty dollars right now. Let me go to buy it now though. Let's go to buy it now. That's not look at auctions. Yeah, I'm seeing eight hundred and twenty nine dollars just for the sixty four gigabyte version. That's double price. That's double price. Uh, for the two fifty six, I'm seeing a thousand dollars, nine hundred dollars, nine twenty five, one thou. Uh, for the five five twelve gigabyte version, which I believe is the largest internal capacity, uh, that's twelve hundred dollars. I'm seeing that listed for. Uh, I'm seeing some of them as high as fifteen hundred. Uh, and this person's actually sold thirty eight of them. Get this. Get, get get this. Get this. This person. Selling the Valve Steam Deck 512 gigabyte brand new sealed unopened in and five star seller for $1,500 has sold 38 Steam Decks. 38 of them. And we're supposed to sit here and pretend it's not being scalped? 
that that Steam's way of handling this is even better. That you can't just make unlimited accounts and get unlimited pre-orders in. It's, you know, not not a, not a beautiful. I mean, how many total listings are here for buy it now? Does it? Let me see. There are. Gosh, I forgot. I thought I thought eBay gave me total listings, but um, there's fifteen hundred plus results. So thousands of these, thousands of these available. Um, with 836 right now available to buy now, which isn't as bad as PlayStation 5, by the way. There's a lot more PlayStation 5s. But that's because there's a lot more P- PlayStation 5s being made. Um, I, I don't know what percentage of this this is on the secondhand market versus people in hand that actually wanted them, but uh, clearly scalpers are taking advantage, at least here in the United States. I can't, I can't speak for other countries besides my own. So, uh, look, the Steam Deck's great. I, I think it's a great piece of tech. I think it shows a bright future for Nintendo because I, I absolutely think uh, NVIDIA is going to have some sort of response with Nintendo. I, I think Nintendo's next platform is going to attempt to outdo what Steam Deck is doing. Uh, and I don't know what that means. I don't know if that's just DLSS, which obviously Steam Deck can't use, uh, or, or what it's going to be. But there's going to be something that I think Nintendo and NVIDIA are working on that's going to remind people who the handheld king is. Uh, because Nintendo's been challenged before, guys. Nintendo has been challenged many times. The Game Gear was a more powerful system. Uh, there were some drawbacks with that. Battery life. Battery life's also not that great on uh, Steam Deck either. But some people, you know, in the PC gaming enthusiast community, they don't really care. They'll just plug that thing in. Uh, it's, it's kind of interesting because a lot of people aren't actually using the Steam Deck on the go. They're just using it in other places in their house where their PC isn't. Which, fun fact, I think that's a, the most common use case for Switch. I do see people playing Switch out in public. But I think a lot of people that play Switch portably, and correct me if I'm wrong, you guys are a lot of, almost most of my audience plays Switch. When you guys play portably, are you just still in your house or like just outside, like in your backyard or something? Like, I, I think it's kind of common that we do play portably, but we're still mostly playing at home. Uh, I don't know. I, I like the article's fine. His, his opinions are fine. His opinions are his own. Um, he, he's brand new to PC gaming, so he's finally seeing all the benefits of it, and that probably makes him think a little bit less of Nintendo. Uh, because PC gaming is a very, very wonderful thing, and I will never attack PC gaming. I just think it, it's a little weird to say the directs are less exciting when there's games being announced that you're going to play. You're just going to play them elsewhere. I, okay, so call it call it a, a, a Valve Steam Direct then, because they ain't giving you one. Valve ain't out here giving you directs. So, Anyways, folks, thank you guys so much for tuning in. I am Nathaniel Robojets from Nintendo Prime. Let me know what you think down in the comments below, and I'll catch you in the next video.